When examining the pantheon of watchmaking, Patek Philippe needs to be considered as a result of its many industry firsts in a name that has become one of the most recognizable in the world of horology. Of their many acclaimed pieces and designs, the dual register chronograph is one that epitomizes class through its marriage of inherent complexity and design restraint. And today we'll take a closer look at the beloved chronograph reference, the 5070P. Let's jump into it. All right, now before we jump into this video, given the nature and tier of watches that we're looking at, we have a great article looking at some of the most expensive watches ever sold at auction and in a variety of other places. Of course, many are going to include Patek Philippe in our list of around 15 to 20 different watches. But also in addition to that, we'll have some other interesting picks from brands from Omega, FP Journe, Rolex, and others that just have cool stories behind them. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. And Patek's history dating back to 1839, there are many watches that hold significant weight both for the brand and for the industry at large. This considered, their development of chronographs certainly requires an extended spotlight. While the chronograph as a watch complication is credited to Louis Monet, who completed the first functional chronograph pocket watch in 1816, Patek's first chronograph was produced and sold in 1856. As the world transitioned into wristwatches in the era surrounding the First World War, Patek adapted its know-how with manual wound chronograph calibers into models including the bi-compact style reference 130 that was produced in a wide variety of different variations between the 1930s and 60s, and the reference 530, known for its 36 and a half millimeter case, a case that was considered large when it was released in 1936. Later, there was the reference 1463, affectionately known as the Tasti Tondi, Italian for round buttons because of its prominent dome-shaped pushers and provides some of the greatest inspiration for the 5070P that we're going to look at here today. The 1463 released in 1940 was the first water-resistant chronograph from Patek Philippe, intended for a sportier lifestyle and in production for a substantial 25 years before being discontinued in 1965. Intriguingly, the brand moved focus away from traditional two-register chronographs for many years, prioritizing its also iconic perpetual chronograph during the period following the discontinuation of the 1463. However, in 1998, Patek unveiled the reference 5070. The surprise with the yellow gold 5070J was the 42 millimeter case, the largest ever produced by Patek, as well as the caliber based on the Lamania CH2770. As is the case for many coveted Patek references, the option for different precious metal cases would come with the platinum case variant 5070P, first being unveiled in 2008. As is often the case with the use of platinum, the production numbers utilizing this material is said to be the most limited of all the 5070 models, in part really due to the limited production time that this one had from 2008 to 2010. And there's speculation that fewer than 500 examples were actually produced during this period. The 5070P's combination of deep metallic blue dial and platinum case are considered the best expression of this model's DNA, or at least one of the most sought after, with prices typically demanding over $250,000 when one is offered for sale, which I think helps demonstrate the kind of unique opportunity it is to dive a little bit deeper into this piece. Beginning with the conversation of the case and wearing experience, the watch on the wrist presents a larger than normal wearing experience for that of a Patek Philippe chronograph, at least by those standards. The typical quoted diameter of this watch is said to be 42 millimeters. However, when measuring from across the case with calibers, I find it measures more closer to that of 41 and a half millimeters. This concept of wearing slightly smaller than its proposed just dimension set is continued with the 48.3 millimeter lug to lug and the svelte 11.6 millimeter thickness with a good portion of that metric owed to the dome sapphire crystal. The watch in its entirety wears closer to that of a 40 millimeter case, especially when factoring in the dramatic step bezel that optically appears to shrink the dial. Even when worn more tightly against the wrist, the additional weight offered by the platinum, which is around 10% heavier compared to gold and 60% heavier than stainless steel, offers a noticeable difference while also presenting a brighter color profile compared to steel. 
Denoting its platinum construction, a diamond is set into the case between the six o'clock lugs, as is Patek's custom to clearly differentiate between platinum and white gold. Set between 21 millimeter lugs, the 5070 is equipped with a dark blue glossy hand-stitched alligator strap that tapers heavily to 18 millimeters and is locked to the wrist by way of a slender platinum deployment clasp with the Calatrava cross on full display. Looking beyond the wear, the rounded central case features sculpted case sides, giving way to the step sloping bezel and ornate lugs that curve sharply toward the wrist in a way that further enhances the wearing experience. At three, a signed six millimeter crown rests in the traditional position, flanked by broad rectangular pushers with neatly rounded corners. Case finish keeps with the watch's more refined position and is polished without exception throughout the step bezel, downswept lugs, and across the protruding elements. The 5070P's dial design is one that combines various points of reference to previous Patek chronographs. The main feeling of new is the dark blue matte primary surface that can appear anywhere from the deepest shade of navy to more of an electric presentation of blue shades, depending on the lighting condition. Starting at the dial's outskirts, a railway minute track printed in stark white, being interrupted at five minute marks with numerical indices, with the secondary finer railway track positioned just within and fine tachometer markings, interestingly, printed in between. Hours are tracked with applied and polished indices with the two, four, eight, and 10 numerals being cut off slightly to give way to those dual sub registers. The three o'clock register specifies that 30 minute chronograph scale and the nine o'clock features the running 60 seconds with both being slightly recessed into the dial surface complete with a sunray effect. At the center, a pair of slender polished leaf style hands with a chronograph second hand in a matte pale shade of gray, helping to contrast from the vivid blue backdrop. Despite its complexity at the dial outskirts, the dial text, brand word mark, and chronograph registers at the dial center all have the ability to breathe quite well. And the same could be said when flipping over the watch and seeing the backside of this piece, we have a view of the CH2770 only filling up a smaller portion of the case and giving reason to why the broad outer bezel on the anterior side was likely constructed. Like a number of Patek chronograph references, including the even more complicated examples such as the 5970, this 5070 utilizes a familiar base with the Lamania 2310, a proven column wheel chronograph movement used by nearly every legendary manufacturer, even occupying the base architecture for the 321 that went into the Moonwatch from the venerable Omega Speedmaster. This movement in this instance undergoes a variety of changes by Patek in order to deliver the end product. For one, the movement is marked with the Geneva seal on the balance bridge. Each gear tooth is reprofiled for better operation. It includes the addition of also a larger free sprung balance and extended power reserve from the base. The CH2770 is traditional in regards to its finish with black polishing on virtually all the screw heads, carefully executed on glage on the edges of bridges, hand engraved text, and directional graining across the tops of the movement component. Considering this is a manual caliber, much is on full display, including the center wheel, a cap column wheel, and lateral clutch assisting with the chrono activation. With this being an 18,000 vibration per hour movement, the stop and start function is not as crisp as later creations in the world of chronographs, but in a way it only adds to the timeless vintage aesthetic that this one exudes. In terms of general specifications for this movement, again, 18,000 vibrations per hour, 2.5 hertz. It is a manual wound chronograph and a power reserve of 60 hours. So for some closing thoughts here on this watch in, in general, now let's just speak to the obvious that this is a watch that's going to be out of reach for pretty much nearly everybody out there. But it's one that I think is also important to know and be familiar with because it is certainly a pillar in Patek's history and also does allow you to look around the industry and see who's maybe potentially pulling from who when it comes to design influence and inspiration. I also think when you're looking at Patek and their uh, almost just lineage of chronographs and where they're coming from, you have to also look back at this original reference. And I think this is almost just a representation of what they do commonly across their entire collection. You see the release of many of the different precious metal options, platinum typically being the one that's going to be the most rare in many of these cases. And to me, this is almost one of the last, I would say, almost old school feeling chronographs from Patek Philippe. As it shifted into the 5170, 
the watch does feel a bit more contemporary compared to something like this. And I don't mean that in a bad way. This is still a fantastic watch, and I think you can almost say epitomizes class in many instances. But there are some strange things about it that almost look back to the era in which it was from. You look at the movement, how it fills up the case, and how, maybe how limited it does, and that outer bezel that is kind of that defining characteristic of this watch and kind of shrinking down that dial, despite the larger case size. Whenever I'm able to showcase a watch like this, it sure is an assessment of the watch itself, but I think it's also an assessment of history of horology and timekeeping. When you get into the, I would say this level of watchmaking, and also a brand of influence like Patek Philippe, you have to look at it under a different scope. And I think not only is this a maybe appreciation for a watch of this tier, uh, whether or not it's going to be for you, I think that's not necessarily the point of these style of videos. It's more of just looking at where this potentially fits in the larger collection of horology as well as watches produced uh, in the 21st century and where can we go from here. This is one of those watches. Whether or not it's for you, doesn't really matter, but I think you should probably still respect it and know of its existence. But all right, guys, that is my showcase of the Patek Philippe 5070P. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. What are your thoughts on this reference, previous uh, chronograph references from Patek, and also maybe more contemporary references, maybe looking at something like the 5170? Uh, where do you see this one stacking up in comparison, and what do you feel about this one? Love to see comments down below. And of course, while you're there, definitely check out teddybaldister.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the new products that we carry, and a growing pre-owned section as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.